For more on the fight against AIDS, we can bring in our guest, Dr. Michael J. Porter, lecturer in molecular genetics and cell biology at the University of Central Lancashire's Medical School. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program. Now, there are all these new treatments today that we're hearing about that can apparently suppress the virus, unt virus until it's nearly non-existent. Can you explain how these treatments work and what life is actually like for people who are taking them? Well, it really has been a, an amazing journey um, with HIV and AIDS. Um, I still remember within my lifetime when AIDS itself, um, we weren't sure which virus caused it or what caused it, um, but it was very much a terminal disease. Now someone with HIV can expect to live pretty much the same length of time as someone without HIV um, because of these amazing um, drug regimes which we've been building up since the sort of mid-1990s, um, which will pull down and uh, reduce the amount of AIDS virus that's being produced in your body. Unfortunately, it will not remove it completely. It will never get the cure, um, and that's where the challenge is. Um, the second challenge, of course, is the fact that around the world just now, we are spending about nearly £50 billion a year to treat AIDS. Um, so finding a cure is not only important for the people who have um, HIV, but also for the economies that are suffering and having to spend all of this money. So then what would you say is the biggest thing standing in the way of the complete eradication of HIV AIDS? Well, that that's, um, comes down to the fact that HIV itself is, is an amazing virus. It can incorporate itself, it can change itself, and it can actually become part of our own DNA and hide away in some of our specialised immune cells. So trying to get rid of it, unlike a lot of other viruses that we just have a vaccine for, it becomes very difficult to get rid of this reservoir, this last little bit of virus. So if we can treat it, we can keep the levels of HIV in a patient down to almost zero. But as soon as you stop treating, the virus will recover and will start to reappear out of this reservoir. So a lot of the treatments that we use nowadays are, are the potential treatments we have as a cure is looking at how do we destroy that reservoir. And that's where it becomes really exciting because we're starting to look into, um, in recent years, looking at the idea of genetically modifying our own cells so that they can attack and destroy this final reservoir. Um, we got the clue, and it was in your report as well, when we see these patients who have uh, a particular change in their DNA, um, and that change has made them resistant to HIV. Now, if we can create that same resistance in people who already have HIV, then we can potentially get rid of that last remaining part, those last remaining bits of virus, and someone will be cured, completely cured. And then just lastly, the theme for this year's World AIDS Day is communities make a difference. How much responsibility rests with communities versus governments and, and the medical community? The, the communities are so important. There are obviously communities that actually have um, higher levels of HIV transmission. Um, the UN um, had targeted um, that by 2020, so we, we don't have long now, that 90% of people would be um, detected who had um, HIV, that 90% would be being treated and that 90% would effectively be in a, a remission, so be an undetectable levels of the virus. Now, the only way that can happen is if people are being tested, that people are taking appropriate precautions, that we, we, we take this as still being a very serious risk. I think we've almost become relaxed about it in a way because it's no longer the terminal disease that we knew about in the 80s. It's now a chronic disease, but it's still something that changes people's lives. And unless we control it in the community, it will continue to spread and it will cost billions um, to treat and it will affect millions and millions of people. So still a lot left to be done there. Thank you so much for joining us, Michael J. Porter, lecturer in molecular gen genetics and cell biology at the University of Central Lancashire's Medical School. Thanks for joining us on the program.
Well, finally, let's 